Today we're gonna make this photo manipulation sports poster in Photoshop. Subject for today is Lucas Ambrose of the Seattle Cascades. Let's get into it. Let's get started by dragging in our background image. So this photo manipulation, we're basically gonna take this landscape image of, I forgot what I typed into Adobe's free stock collection, but that's where this came from. And we're gonna blend it with this player photo of Lucas Ambrose. So I've dragged this in as two separate layers. I've gone ahead and already cut out the player, but I also want to use this full photo because we're going to use this grass in the foreground. So I have my player cutout layer on top, I have the full photo underneath, and then I have this background photo underneath both of those. So let's take our player and move him with the background photo down to the bottom of the canvas. I'm just going to line this up. And now we're going to mask out the background of our player photo by going to our gradient tool, dropping a mask on this layer. And then with a black to transparent gradient, I'm using the gradient tool instead of the rectangular marquee tool because I want this gradual, like very subtle, soft fade out. But if you just click on a point near the edge of that grass, and if you hold shift, you can keep this straight instead of moving around freely. So we'll keep it straight and just a very slight, slow fade. It's gonna keep that grass and then erase the rest of the background so we're left with our stock image background. Now with any photo manipulation, color and lighting are the key things to get right. So we can start with the lighting. Like you can see this grass is a slightly different shade than more of the background yellow green texture. So let's fix that. I'm gonna drop a selective color layer on top of the grass and we can clip it so it's only affecting this grass layer, holding option, hovering in that space between layers and clicking. Now if we go to the yellows, we can and see what we can do with these dials. I think adding some red and magenta is good and maybe making it a little more yellow, but suddenly it's feeling like it, it fits in to the background image more than it did previously. So you can see before and after a lot more yellow and red and orange tones to make it fit. The other thing I want to do with the background is accentuate this lighting a little bit more. It's a really cool shot with like dramatic clouds and light coming through. So just to get a little bit more out of that light, I'm going to drop a curves layer on top of our background layer and just clicking a point there to kind of lock in the low points and then clicking in the midtones. Lifting this is just going to brighten up the bright points of this background. So already we're kind of getting this dramatic lighting reflecting on the player. You can see this player cut out too. The lighting conditions in which this photo is taken are very similar to this background. Like you can see where the light is naturally hitting the player. It's this harsh light casting shadows on the right side, but you get this these sunlight spots that are pretty well aligned with this background image. Maybe not perfect, but it's always helpful in a photo manipulation to start with like what could be realistic lighting conditions and then just trying to find Tune things from there. Now getting back to the lighting on this grass, I think it's pretty good as is, but there is a good amount of contrast going on in the background and we're not really seeing that same contrast here. So let's drop a curves layer also clipped to this foreground grass. I'm just gonna drag down the midtones a little bit. Maybe we can up the highlights just to create a little bit more contrast. And again, just trying to match it to the background. So now we can move on to the cutout lighting and color. Let's start with the lighting. I'm gonna drop on an exposure adjustment layer to start. And again, clipping this, holding option, hovering in that space and clicking. We're just gonna drop down the exposure pretty significantly. And then we'll paint back on the parts that we want more lit up by this light. So we can take a black brush on our white mask, going to B for your brush tool and switching your foreground color to black. And let's just start revealing parts where we don't want this darkness exposure layer hitting. So really just like on this edge of the player, that's where the light is gonna be most strongly hitting him. And you can maybe get a little pop of color in the jersey. You might wanna decrease the flow just so you have a little bit more control over this part. But something like that. And you can see like on the jersey, it already has some highlights. So that can kind of guide where you're gonna add this light. And I always wanna make sure the face has enough light on it as well. Going over here to the arm, that's got some light. We've got more light on the jersey in this bottom portion and then on the shorts as well. So it's kind of up to you how strong you make this effect. But the idea is just you wanna generally reflect the direction 
that this light is hitting our player. We can do a few more things to accentuate these lighting conditions. One is to add an inner shadow on our cutout. So if you click your cutout layer, go to your effects and click inner shadow, we can use like a, a white or you can even eyedropper one of these pale yellow colors and keep it on overlay blend mode, crank the opacity just so we can see what the effect is doing. And we wanna set the angle to something that's more in line with where the light is. So maybe something around there. And you can see when you increase the distance, the light coming onto the player. This is just lighting up the edges of the cutout. So something to separate him a little bit more from the background. You can play with the size and see what that does but you can see a before and after. Another way we can bring out the highlights even further is by adding a curves adjustment layer. So going to your adjustments, curves, we can put this on top of the exposure and let's just take a point around the middle and bring it up. So we're really brightening up our cutout and then let's invert this mask, command I. So we have a black mask and now with a white brush, let's go ahead and paint on kind of the finer details of these highlights. It's so basically any place, and you can start with a lower flow than you had before. Anywhere you see the cutout is like already lit up, you can go ahead and paint over that. So it's kind of a second round of accentuating these highlights. The exposure layer was kind of the base level, and now this I, I view as more of a like fine tuning. So you can see that effect before and after, just again, a little bit of pop, a little bit more brightness there. And if you want to accentuate or decentuate, if that's a word, this effect, you can move this dial up or down. You've already masked out the portions that you want it affecting. So I'm gonna leave it somewhere around there. Another thing you can do with any light of a specific color, I mean, this is mostly white light, but there is sort of a yellow hue to some of it. We can take a hue and saturation layer and again, clip this on top of everything. Let's switch this to colorize. You can check that box. I'm just gonna switch the color to something close to the sky color and it's not too saturated, but maybe something around there and you can bring up the lightness so that it, whatever we paint on is gonna affect the darker parts as well. You can again, invert this mask, command I, and just ever so softly, we can actually bring the flow back up and start brushing on just the edges to get kind of like a, a rim light type glow and really can be very subtle does not have to be extreme. This can just sell the effect and sell the blending of this cutout into our image a little bit more. So you can see what that's doing as well before and after. Now I wanna move on to the color of like his actual kit and, and skin tones. It's not bad as it is right now. Like I, I could believe that these colors exist in this world, but it's kind of nice to have a little bit more color consistency. So like looking at the blue in his jersey, you can look towards the background and there's more like green and like more desaturated blues and blue green tones. So I'm gonna try to bring his jersey color a little bit closer to that. Let's drop on a new layer, selective color and again move this on top of everything let's go to our blues and you can start playing with these I think yeah moving the magentas down kind of gets it a little bit more blue green and you can move the yellows up again to kind of go more towards that green that we see in the background skin tones you might want to play with as well that's usually existing in the red category so we can maybe up the yellows just because this is kind of a golden hour warm temperature theme so usually you have more yellow skin tones and you can also move the magentas a little bit down to capture that same thing. Usually lowering the cyans pops out the red of the skin tones, which could look good as well. But in general, I don't want to make it too saturated. So something around there feels pretty good to me. You can see a before and after with the skin tones and jersey adjustment. Now the last thing I want to do to adjust the contrast of the player cutout in the background, I'm going to drop a black fill layer over the top of everything and set this blend mode to color. Now this is a trick you can use to just see if things look like they fit together from like a lighting and contrast standpoint to edit this cutout and edit the, the shades and contrast on the cutout. We're gonna drop on another curves layer, again, clipping it. And you can see like the darkest points on his shorts feel like they're darker than like this dark gray on the background. So what we can do is just click a few points and lift up the blacks ever so slightly, try to get that closer. And you can do the same thing with these other tones. Like if anything feels a little bit off, like either too white or too dull on the cutout, you can adjust these curves dials. Just make it feel like the cutout blends into the background and, and belongs here. And I think I like it about there. So now we can remove this black color test layer and just see. You can also remove the contrast layer before and after. 
just lifting up that black point, I do think made a good difference. Maybe we lower it ever so slightly. That feels like a pretty well blended cut out to me. Another thing we can do with the background is give it like a subtle blur. If this was like actually taken like a photo, cut out would be in main focus. You have already a little bit of blur in this like ground foreground, but we don't have the blur in the background. So click your background layer, go up to filter, blur gallery, tilt shift. Basically we wanna move this middle circle to the point where we want everything totally sharp. And then you can adjust these points. These are going to indicate the part of the image that is most sharp and then fading out to the blur is this dotted line. And then you could set the strength of the blur over here on the right side or with this circle dial. So we don't need anything like super extreme, but something like this feels better to me. You can see when I toggle it on and off, the background just gets a little bit out of focus the further back you look, which I think is a little bit more realistic if you had an actual camera taking this picture. So now that we have the lighting, color, and contrast down, we can kind of make some master effects to take this image in whatever direction we want. I used a curves adjustment in my initial go at this poster, kind of flattened everything out. So just clicking a few points, you can take the white point and just drag it down and then also lower this midpoint a little bit. It's just gonna flatten everything out a little bit. You can even lift the black point too, but it kind of makes it from this higher contrast image to a lower contrast one. And I think that's gonna allow the text at the top to pop, which we'll get to right now. Let's make a new layer, hit T for your type tool. Let's type out Lucas, this is Lucas Ambrose. Lucas is the first name. We'll make this nice and small. And we'll use Arial Bold as the font. We can bring this down to like 14. And I'm gonna bring up my grids here. Command apostrophe is a shortcut. And I'm just gonna line this up with like a two box margin from the top. And just centering this whole thing, Command A, select the whole screen and center justify. Now let's type out his last name as well. I'm gonna duplicate this text layer with Command J. Drag it down, we'll type out Ambrose. And this font we're gonna use Fleur Display. We're gonna get rid of the all caps. We're gonna bring it closer together, just back to a zero spacing. And we'll blow this way up to 358. And again, centering this, bring up the grids, and we'll make sure this maintains that same two box margin. And now because the A is kind of off balance, like it comes out with this tail, I'm actually going to move this whole thing to the left a little bit because visually it, it'll make it feel a little bit more centered. So something like this, maybe it's more of like a two and a half to three box margin on that side and one and a half on the other side. I also noticed when I was choosing this font initially, there's like a big open space where this O is. And I liked the idea of putting Lucas's number two in the middle of that O. So let's go ahead and do that. Command J again to duplicate that layer. Let's type out a two and just bring this up so it fits in nicely. Now we can make some subtle text effects here. Let's take the Ambrose and the two layer, select those both and then holding option, just click and drag those layers below the existing ones duplicating them. Filter, convert for smart filters. Now we have like the Ambrose and two all together. Now you can go up to filter, blur, motion blur, and pick whatever type of motion blur you want. I'm gonna use this negative 45 degree angle at 45 pixels just to get this subtle diagonal blur to the whole thing. Hit okay. And now to go with this motion blur, let's just add a subtle Gaussian blur to the Ambrose and the Lucas. So let's take those layers, highlight them all, Command J, and then we can hide the previous ones, group these all into a smart object, and then going up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. You can just do something like I don't know, one and a half pixels. I wanna still be able to read that Lucas. So yeah, I think 1.5 pixels is a good mark. Now you might like white text at the top here. What I did originally was take some of this background coloring and use that to color our text. So let's take these two smart object text layers, group them into a folder, we'll call it text. And now let's take our background layer. I'm gonna hold option and click and drag, bring it on top of everything and clip it to our text layer. So holding option and hovering in that space, clicking. Now you can move it up or down. We just have the background layer currently being masked to this text. Now let's take this blur gallery off 
and just change it to a, a strong Gaussian blur, going up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, yeah, something around 30 pixels. So we're getting this like gradient of color. Now we can move it around and really get that like brightest point of the image contrasting well with the dark clouds in the background. You could leave your composition here. I like to have a little bit of complementary text on the bottom if I can. So let's make a new layer, T for your type tool, and let's type out Lucas, first let's go back to our Arial bold 14 font, and maybe this one we space out a little bit. I'm gonna type out his first and last name, Lucas Ambrose. We will left justify this and bring it down to the bottom, bringing up my grids again, just using that similar two box margin that we were going with before. Although, I don't know, the placement on the grass, maybe we can go a little bit lower. Let's duplicate that layer with Command J, Seattle Cascades will be the middle portion of this text. Center justify that and align it to the center as well. Then again, Command J, type out number two. This will be right justified and brought to the right side. For the color of this text, let's take like a slightly light gold color that we're seeing in the background. So we're just gonna select all these. Let's go to a yellow, we can even eyedropper, you know, maybe something from these bushes and just bring it up so it's more of like a light gold almost towards yellow. Click that in our swatches to activate it. And honestly, maybe it's better just to take from this top text that might feel a little bit more balanced. So almost more of a beige than a yellow. Time for some finishing effects. Let's make a new layer, Command Option Shift E to apply the image to its own layer. Filter, convert for smart filters, filter, camera raw filter. These are gonna be our master adjustments. And we could start with some lighting and color. This of course is up to you, however you wanna play with things. I do like adding to these highlights and bringing out this lighting some more. Maybe upping the shadows slightly. Adding the whites, I think adds a nice effect. And for the texture and clarity, I'm actually gonna bring the clarity down for once and give it this like slightly dreamier look. We can still up the texture slightly and maybe play with the dehaze to get some more of that cloud detail back. And then I like adding some vignetting, also adding a little bit of grain. Never hurts, we'll add that here, about 25. You can see if you want any curves adjustments as well. Maybe we want a little bit more brightness, more contrast too but I don't know, I kind of like the, the more flattened, dreamy look. So let's stick with something in there. You can get even more of like a dreamy glow going if you duplicate this layer and then go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we can mess with this effect later, but maybe something around five pixels and then setting this blend mode to lighten. You can see it just kind of like softens everything, gives like a, a nice glow to some of these background flowers and textures. What I don't like is you lose a good amount of detail on the cutout himself. So let's actually bring it down a little bit to, I don't know, 3.5 pixels. And then I'm just gonna mask out, dropping a mask on this with a black brush, our cutout's face, just so we don't like lose that main focus of the image. As far as colors go, you can play with selective color, you can play with hue and saturation on top of everything. Let's go hue and saturation. I do feel like the skin tones are maybe a little bit too saturated at the moment. So I'm just gonna take the reds and drop them down ever so slightly. And as far as master color adjustments go, you can always bring on a color lookup as well. See if you like any of these. I think I like this 2395. It's just like a subtle wash. We're gonna stop there for today. That is our finished Lucas Ambrose photo manipulation poster. The main takeaway with these photo manipulations is just color and lighting and not being afraid to add adjustment layer on top of adjustment layer until you get the colors right and until you get the lighting right. If you wanna download this PSD directly, you can visit my Patreon. I've just uploaded this one as the second PSD upload of the month of December. Thank you for everyone who's currently a member. If you're not a member, that's the way you can get PSD files from me. I'm also very quick to answer DMs and messages, get design feedback. I have a whole list of perks available on the site. So check it out. Let me know what you think. And I'm always open to feedback on how to make it better. Thanks for watching. And as always, let me know if you have any questions.